And a day moving away. Suffice to say, we're not here to stay. The games we play, the fuss we make, the reason for living is made clear that day. The angels stand with no demands, cause they understand judgment's hand. Not a soul will speak, cause they are weak. Before the true authority, la ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Allahumma sorry ala wa sayyidina malana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tisman kathira. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Farooq. This is the eternal journey, inshallah ta'ala. And I'm joined by my esteemed guest and colleague, mashallah, Hisham. Alhamdulillah. How are you, brother? Very well. Jazakallah khairan. So, brother. In the last episode, we started an introduction of death, no. okay, and we began talking about death. Now, we went to the streets and we asked people further, Sahih. okay, Sahih. we asked them further about what they think about death and what's the meaning of death and why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create death. So let's go inshallah ta'ala, see what people have to say and then we'll come back inshallah to discuss it further. Don't go anywhere. What was the, pers the purpose of death? Actually, um, it's related to the question What's the purpose of life? Mm -hmm. Because um, when we, we, we speak about death, we speak about life and about the system, how God may, made it. We, uh, we came from death, mm -hmm. we are living, and then we're going to die again, and then we're going to live again. So why, um, why is that? Uh, Allah created death it's because he created life and because he made a short period of time for Muslims and non Muslims for humans in general to be tested the purpose of creation of death was to see or to give us the in the, the complete justice of our actions and of our life because as we know this life is unjust many people do things and they don't face the consequences of what they do therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us death to recompense all good action and all evil action on the day of recompense it's showing how fair Allah is you know why because imagine if um, we are just created there is no no death and um, we, we, we just do anything if person is doing bad things he will uh, he won't be punished for what he did um, and the day of resurrection, right? And if someone did lots of good things as well. So, so we need to know that it's really, uh, for me, I feel like this is uh, showing how fair Allah is because he created death. Anyone, uh, I mean, during this life, if he's a prime minister, if he's a normal man, if he's rich, if he's poor, he's facing death. Without death, we, we, there is no life, there is no test, and then uh, we won't know who succeeded the test and who did not. Jazakallah khair to everybody who helped us out that day. Alhamdulillah, we got some lovely responses, mashallah. But let's turn to now our guides for this series, Bi'idhnillah, who's going to help us understand this eternal journey that we are all part of, and that is, of course, uh, Sheikh Wasim Kemsen. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, of course, Sheikh Saeed Al Ghadi. Assalamu alaikum. 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 As we mentioned before, that uh, uh, after Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Muhammad, that um, the scholars have defined death by few terms. Uh, one of them is that death is a uh, calamity, death is great affliction, SubhanAllah. because by death we will lose the opportunity to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, return Allah. back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and because by death the uh, book of good deeds will be closed. closed. Wow. Also, they define death as um, a, a pain, 
and we spoke about this. Uh, the moment of death will have agonies, will mm -hmm. have uh, uh, some pain, uh, and even the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi used to, as well, experience this. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Or experience this. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Moreover, death is also defined as discovery because you will discover death, you will discover the reality of this life at the moment of death. You yes. will know the purpose of your existence. You will know that you are living now to uh, proceed into another life. Okay, oh. so you will realize the short, uh, the shortness of this life. You will realize the purpose of your existence in, in that life. Uh, moreover, they also define death as taken away, meaning at the moment of death you will be taken away from everything that you have in this life. You will be taken away. And everything that you own in this life will be taken away from you. So whatever you gathered, whatever you saved, whatever you had in this life, whatever you worked hard to achieve and to acquire in this life, it will be taken away from you at the moment of death. And you will be thrown in that small hole in the grave with uh, nothing but your deeds. You won't take with you your money, you won't take with you your cars or your properties, you'll take nothing and go to that grave with nothing. And that's why it's called taking away. You'll we'll be taken away from everything and uh, thrown in that small hole. Now you mentioned um, that we'll go to the next life. Now, what, what is the name of this next chapter, as we could call it, Chef? And uh, also, what, what, is, what is that life like in the next part? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam, rasulillah wa ba'd. We go through a, a number of uh, different existences, if you, if you could say this. And <coughs> we have the, what we apparently say is the physical, uh, physical existence. Of course, we acknowledge that we have the soul with us here, but that's what we can see. Mm -hmm. And then we go on to the next life when the body dies and when that body dies it is uh, a new life a new existence there is a new uh, understanding and comprehension this is called the life of the barzakh the barzakh what the barzakh. does that translate as the barzakh roughly. if you like the life of the grave and it literally means a barrier it okay. literally means like a barrier between two things it's like mm -hmm. between this life and the, the life of the grave is this is this you know this barrier Mm -hmm. It is an existence within itself that the person is able to comprehend certain matters which we have, of course, spoken about before and which we will speak about uh, shortly. But this is uh, where the person will experience many things. If they have uh, rewards or they're to be punished, uh, it is something that is uh, something on their soul as well as their body. Mm -hmm. It's very important that even though that the body dies, that there will be uh, there may be some form of affliction to the body as well to to the soul. So this, in general, is is the life of the barzakh. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He He mentions this in, in one of the verses that uh, Sheikh Said mentioned earlier. وَمِنْ وَرَائِهِمْ بَرْزَخٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ. And beyond them is the the life of the barzakh until the day of the resurrection. Okay. Sheikh Hussein, I've heard many people mention this. There is a greater death and a lesser death. I have never mm. really understood it. What does it mean? Mm. Is there a difference? Is there such thing as a greater death and a lesser death? Mm. And what does it mean? Yeah. Uh, this goes back to <coughs> um, uh, certain Arabic terms, the tawaffa or mawt, which both essentially mean to die. However, uh, when you look at the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this word tawaffa, ya tawaffa, in, in different contexts. There is the minor death, and that is when a person goes to sleep at night. Oh, yes. And then the soul is taken from that body. This is called the minor death. al mawtat al-sughra. Or al sughra the minor death. Of course, the greater death is when the, the soul is taken and is not returned. So it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who takes the soul when that person goes to sleep. And there are those whom the, the soul is returned in the morning. So what is the dua when you wake up? Alhamdulillahi alladhi ahyana ba'da ma amatana wa ilayhim mashur. All yes. praise is due to Allah, the one who gave us life after he had taken it. Mm -hmm. Of course, we didn't die in the greater sense, mm -hmm. but in the smaller, minor sense, that there was like a, a smaller death. And there, you know, there's great similarities. That when you're, you're sleeping, that there's very little movement. You, you're not aware of what is going on around you. So there are some, uh, some similarities. But this essentially is the, the difference between 
the greater and the minor death. Hello, uh, one point arises in my mind, Bashar, so speaking, is that subhanAllah, the uh, sleep is, an, uh, is, is a chance, uh, or there's a probability, a probability that we might leave this life mm -hmm. while we're sleeping. Okay? And that's why we need to end our day before we go into bed, before we sleep, have to end in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, either by dhikr, finishing our witr, and because as in the verse we have, Allah ta'ala said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes the souls while they are asleep. والتي لم تمت في منامها فيمسك التي قضى عليها الموت ويرسل الأخرى الله سبحانه وتعالى uh, all the souls will go back to him he will hold he takes hold of all of them and he will release them of them and some will be kept by Allah سبحانه وتعالى الله. so he might leave, he leave this life while you are asleep الله. okay so that's why it is it's called a great uh, lesser death a lesser death or a minor death and that's why we have to do so much adhkar Mm -hmm. Remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We read so much At the time of death At the time of sleep Sorry There's the adhkar and nom That we say So we live in the best state yeah. And we should pray two rak'at The mm -hmm. three you know, pulls Yeah Yes so, uh, yeah. Ayatul Qudsi How many will have slept And they do make up How many people subhanallah. Many subhanallah yeah. so. And therefore We have to take this into uh, Practice And we have to learn From these things These lessons That uh, We end up our day In, in the best manner That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes so if it happens that we leave this life, Alhamdulillah, we leave this life uh, in, in, in a way that Allah SWT likes. It's making me think, sorry, uh, no. for, it's sorry. making me think that when I'm, uh, when I'm going to sleep, it's almost as if I'm, yes, I am going into a, a lesser death. Mm. So it's, uh, I should really do, uh, like, do my best to ensure I'm, I'm going to sleep in the best way. Okay, that I'm doing my adhkar, I've got wudu. I'm following exactly. the sunnah of the Prophet exactly. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because I may not wake up. Sahih. Subhanallah. So taking that uh, the 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 rituals that you do before going to sleep, taking them more seriously, and really uh, kind of contemplating upon them and internalizing them before mm -hmm. you go to sleep to ensure that you go in a in a uh, the best format. Subhanallah. No. May Allah guide us, inshallah, to, amin, do, amin, to amin, do more before amin. the end of it, ibn ta'ala. So, jazakhal al khair, uh, we're going to stop for a very short break, bit ibn ta'ala. Don't go anywhere, brothers and sisters, because we've got more questions and more knowledge coming straight after this. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Imagine a day moving away. Suffice to say, we're not here to stay. Blessed month has dawned upon us With its merits and blessings combined In it the Qur'an was given to Muhammad Peace and blessings be upon his soul Without Iman being up Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This is your brother Gabriel Romani Please join me live this Ramadan Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday from 5 to 6 p.m. UAE time Live from Dubai And also which corresponds with 1 to 2 p.m. GMT time for Ramadan spirit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with this amazing month, Ramadan, a month of reaffirming our spirit, of reaffirming our faith, of reconnecting with the speech, with the Quran, of fasting, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that this is for what? To achieve taqwa. Please join me as I will bring some amazing guests, amazing topics, such as the revelation of the Quran, miracles of the Quran, the importance of fasting, the importance of brotherhood in Islam, the importance of knowing the history of Islam during Ramadan, and many other things. Join us live. Huda, a light in every home. The blessed month has dawned upon us with its merits and blessings combined. In it, the Quran was revealed to Muhammad. Peace and blessings be upon his soul. Without Iman being uplifted from reading the Holy Quran. Imagine a day. Moving away, suffice to say we're not here to stay. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back brothers and sisters. Before the break, we were speaking about death. We were talking about the lesser death and the greater death. But uh, the question arises now is, what time, when we're speaking about the greater death, Sheikh, when the person passes away and, as they say, part, crosses over, mm -hmm. crosses over to the, to the next world. Um, does anyone know what... 
when is the appointed time? Can anyone know when they're deaf? Uh, can anyone maybe receive signs to tell them that you know it's death is near or the exact time when when they will die? Maybe dreams or things like that. Uh, well, Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala kept these things, these knowledge, uh, only for him, and no one knows them but him. Subhanahu wa Taala. There are things that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala did not disclose to anyone. And one of them is the time of death. And where people will die. Uh, Allah Ta'ala in the Quran said, وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا تَكْسِبُ غَدَى وَمَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ وَمَا تَدْرِي نَفْسٌ مَاذَا أَرْضٍ تَمُوتُ And no soul knows what, she, what it will earn on the, on the next day. And no soul knows where it will die. Yes. Okay. Yes. And of course, when it will die. This is... Uh, a knowledge that Allah Subhanahu wa kept for Himself. So the time is not known and the place is not. Known. No one knows that, apart from uh, the, the, the prophets. The prophets, uh, they won't be told when they will die. They won't. They won't be told. But they will be. Uh, the permission will be taken from them before the the soul is taken. Allahu Akbar. So Allah. the angels will come and tell them, okay, now it's the moment of death, uh, and then they will take permission from them before they they take their souls. Subhanallah, that's mm. such a beautiful moment. Subhanallah. Mm. It, this shows the, the 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 high position that the the prophets have, Sheikh. Not only them, not only them. Even 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 the the, the true believers of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, there is nothing that Allah Taala will hesitate in doing in His universe, in His kingdom, more than hesitating taking the soul of the righteous believer, because His righteous believer hates death. Allah Taala hates to uh, disappoint him. Uh, and that is mentioned in the hadith. And my servant will continue doing good deeds until I love him. And once I love him, I will become his sense of hearing that he, he hears. I will become his sense of, of sight with, the, with which he sees. I will become his hand with which he fights. I will become his leg with which he walks. And he asks me, I will give him. If he seek refuge from me, I will give him refuge. And I don't hesitate in doing anything more than I hesitate in taking the soul of my righteous servant. No. Because he hates death. He hates death and he doesn't yes. know about death. Uh, and I hate to disappoint him, subhanAllah. Uh, yeah. We ask Allah to make death, I mean. death easy for us. I mean. Uh, will, a, will a person know their result before they die? Will, will a person know this is where I'm going before they, you know, actually the, the angel takes the soul out? Is there any way that they can have an indication? Definitely. Definitely. No one shall leave this life until he gets his results. Until he sees his destination in the Jannah or in the Hellfire. Until he sees his seat in Jannah or the Hellfire. And this is the hadith. No, sh no soul shall die. I swear by whom my soul is in his hand that no soul shall die until it sees its destination in Jannah or the Hellfire. So you get to know your result. And that's why you see the impact of this result on the faces of people when they die, when they, when they are about, about to uh, depart from this life. You see them either happy, pleased, uh, uh, smiling, or you see them uh, upset, mm -hmm. okay, because of their destination. Uh, so therefore, yes, you will have the results. You will have your resu results immediately. Mm -hmm. Not to wait. This is Subhanahu Taala, uh, the the reality of this life. You do your deeds, you do your your uh, your action in this life, you'll be given results right away. Some of the people we asked uh, on the streets, they said that um, that you will go back to Allah back to Allah. Is this correct? Do we actually go back straight to Allah to get our... Does Allah say anything to us when we die? Or do we immediately go uh, uh, to be questioned by the angels? What, what's the difference there? Well, as soon as, soon as you uh, pass away, your soul will be taken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, uh, and, and we have two different uh, scenarios. One for the believer, one for the disbeliever. Mm -hmm. But you will be taken to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. Because uh, it is an oath from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He taken him upon himself that he created us and that will return back to him. Yes. Okay, and then we will return back again to the earth. Sheikh, mm. returning back to the point of death. Mm. Okay, uh, Sheikh Hussein, you know, some people, they, as Sheikh Sayyid Al-Qadi mentioned, that we will uh, go, people will have a bad ending. Okay. Now, but what are the signs that someone is having a bad ending? Let's say I'm the one of my family members or loved ones or friends is passing away in front of me and I see something. Okay, are there any signs that we can look for? Uh, or should we look for these signs? Uh, should we tell people about them if we see them? 
You know, what are the signs of someone having a bad ending? And also, can I quickly add as well, is there any cause for this? Is there anything we should be aware of now in the dunya to avoid having a bad end? Yeah. You know, it's a great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the fact that our appointed time is hidden from us. It's a great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. There are many things you can you know, draw parallels with. That, you know, imagine when you're going on a journey and you're packing your bags and you're doing things last minute. It's great stress for you. Yeah. When you're just, you know, just packing your, your, your suitcase just to go on, on a journey. And it's, it's pressure on you just to do something because, you know, the minutes are, are counting down. And if you're not at the airport, for example, you're not at the train station, it's going to leave without you and cause you great, you know, great problems. Imagine now that you know that there's just an hour left of your life. It's a great, mis- it's a great mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't know that it's hidden from you. Now, <coughs> ultimately... Um, it's difficult to say, you know, 100% that person is in a good ending or had a good ending and it's going to be good for them for sure. Or that person had a bad ending and for sure, you know, they will have uh, a bad, you know, a result. You know, you find that, that the Prophet ﷺ gave us an example on uh, different occasions where uh, a person uh, on the Day of Judgment who was a martyr, or a person who was able to recite the Quran, yes, yes, yes. and a person who had you know wealth and was given charity, that, they, that those people you know apparently done good deeds, and yeah, the person yeah. died in a good state. However, yeah, yeah. they will be thrown into the hell fire because they done it and done it in a way which wasn't not for the sake of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and they done it in a way in a showing off. Likewise, you might see a person who uh, die in a bad state, and you know what do we mean by by dying in a bad state? You know, some people no, say... No, 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 yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. My, I'm going to answer my own question. Okay, go <laughs> <on>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What do we mean by that? Well, things like, you know, that what, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala require from us? Allah azza wa jalla requires uh, a certain obligations to be fulfilled, uh, certain things to be, stay, you know, the, uh, prohibitions, you stay away from them. So if a person has died in a state where they, they've died, died in a state of disobedience, yes. then we can, you know, again, we cannot say 100%, but we can say, subhanAllah, it is not a good di- you know, good state to die in because you will be raised in the state that you left this dunya. So if a person died in a state where they were in Salah, for example, they would be raised like that. Yeah. If a person was uh, de- gambling or a person, you know, died in a state of, of being drunk, they would oh, be sad. raised like that, or a person died, you know, uh, committing shirk, that a person will be raised in that state. So you're always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect you from an evil ending. Yes. You're always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you a good ending mm-hmm. so that you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your best action. Even though a person may have had years of disobedience and sins, a person, you know, just before they die, may do something good. And if yeah. you do see a person who is, has passed away and maybe things aren't good, you shouldn't tell people about it. You keep it to yeah. yourself. Yeah. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah maghfir lah. Allah maghfir lah. Allah have mercy upon them. It will cover them and Allah make easy for us all. And yeah. If I may say on, on this point here is that, you know, Sheikh, you've mentioned, you know, this is the hadith of Prophet Muhammad mm-hmm. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the person may do good until the last minute and then they do something bad and then they, uh, they, they die on, I think, I believe they go to Jannah and the person will do bad all their life and then at the end they'll do something good. Uh, so the, the other way around. Right. Uh, some people, uh, they, they kind of rely on this, Sheikh. Mm. Yeah, they rely yeah. on this. To say that, okay, I will carry on doing things and to try and trick have, Allah. Yeah, they have too much hope. Okay, alhamdulillah, we should hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But uh, can we have some words from, uh, from you, Sheikh Said Al Qadi, about this and the dangers of kind of being laxed? Well, the same hadith was explained to uh, people on another uh, narration in which uh, the Nabi Sallallahu said that uh, a person may do good deeds yes. in that which is apparent to people. But inside himself, he's not, he's not sincere. Yeah. Uh, he has no sincerity in his works, in his uh, actions. So he does good deeds in that which is apparent to people. Mm-hmm. Okay? And then before he dies, he will do bad deeds and then die on that. Mm-hmm. And a person may do bad deeds in that which is apparent to people, although he's a righteous person. Okay? Uh, or that person himself, he's doing it and he acknowledging his mistakes, acknowledging his faults, and he's repentant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the end, Allah Ta'ala will grant him repentance and he will do good deeds uh, uh, and, and he will end, end his life uh, with good deeds. But let's just establish here, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala is named himself uh, with the name of the just. Allah Ta'ala is the just. Yes. So everyone will leave this life according to uh, the, the track record of his actions. Okay? 
your actions, your deeds, okay, your uh, sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are sincere to Allah ta'ala, you want Allah to guide you, Allah ta'ala might guide you some, sometime, okay, uh, later on. But if you are always dependent on the mercy of Allah ta'ala, doing no actions and no deeds, uh, and uh, you are not showing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, any gratitude or any act of worship, you're not serious. You're not serious about it, okay? And Allah ta'ala is just. Uh, the person who does work, does actions, is not unlike the one who doesn't do deeds. Jazakumullah khair and barakallahu feekum. It's been a beautiful uh, you know, half an hour that we spent with our mashayikh, really understanding this inevitable uh, occurrence in this eternal journey that we are on. Sahih. And may Allah allow us to benefit from this, because uh, th- th- sometimes it could be just information for us. But yeah. really, we need, to, we need to understand that death is coming, and uh, we would like to be of those who have a good ending, inshallah ta'ala. So, jazakallah khair. I am Farooq, and I'll be giving my salam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And I am Hisham. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Imagine a day moving away Suffice to say we're not here to stay The games we play, the fuss we make The reason for living is made clear that day The angels stand with no demands Cause they understand judgment's hand Not a soul will speak cause they are weak before the true authority